Hey church, uh, welcome to another online message. I am Pastor Tyler Harding and I pastor Tuttle's Chapel, Ellers Chapel, and Meadow Creek United Methodist Church. And I just want to take a second and welcome you. I'm glad you are watching another virtual message. It is crazy to think that we are near one year of me saying another virtual message. But we are going to make the most of this, and I am so glad that you are watching. Hopefully, you can sit down and watch this um, with your family or uh, with a friend. Um, be sure to share this if you think it's good, um, because it's it's a message I think that that needs to get out. Um, for the time being, we are still not in person. I'm still trying to work out when we might be able to get back in person. Um, I'm hoping sooner than later. I just don't have a hard uh, date on that yet, but stay tuned. Um, we will get there sooner than later. I, I've heard this week that vaccines is continuing to get um, deployed and um, out there. And so at some point, we're going to see those numbers begin to drop. And as they drop, I promise you, we will be back in person. We will see each other every Sunday um, and we will go from there. But I do have some exciting news. So uh, this week, I, because I've been chomping at the bit, I, I miss seeing you all. I wish I could see you. Um, but I thought I have a new way that we can connect. And if this is not something you're interested in, that's totally fine. But what I'm going to start doing on Tuesday evenings, okay, this will be Tuesday evenings, I'm going to start setting up Zoom meetings. Now, if you don't know what Zoom is, I'll give you just a, a brief uh, idea of what it is. Zoom is a platform where lots of people can come on and video chat with each other. So you'll be at a computer or a phone and you will get to see faces of everybody else that is in the Zoom call. Um, and what is so great about Zoom, even if you don't have a computer or you can't quite figure out how to do it on a computer, there's actually a phone number that you can call and it'll put you into the big Zoom call. And so I'm going to get, uh, be on the lookout. Uh, I'm going to have instructions out for you. I will be talking to you. But if that is something you are interested in, um, let me know and I will make sure you understand how to be involved. And so what that will look like on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. And I'm going to guess It'll last for about 30 minutes, give or take, but it'll be a time that we can come together and we can share any life updates. We can share prayer requests, and I can pray for everybody, and I can give a short devotion. Um, I thought it might just be a way that in this virtual time, finding a way that we can connect on a more personal level. Um, and so be on the watch out for that. That'll be Tuesday. We're actually starting this Tuesday, 6 p.m., um, on the Facebook pages or the email, I will send out a link for the Zoom call. And so all you'll have to do is if you're on a computer or you're on a phone, you can just tap that link and it will bring you to the call. It's that simple, okay? Um, or there will be a phone number. And if you don't want, if you can't figure out the link, you can just call the number and you'll be able to talk on your phone to everybody in the group. Um, and so again, I will be talking to you. If you don't understand, that's okay. Just know we're going to be doing something this coming up Tuesday and, and really every Tuesday, I want to do it every Tuesday until we're back in person, just to give us a, a way to, to be a community. So be on the lookout for that. That'll be exciting. It'll be fun. We may run into some problems and we will work them out. Uh, we will, we will work together to make sure, um, we get to do that. So, um, if you have questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, if not, I will uh, kind of put out some instructions here, um, at least by tomorrow, so you'll be ready for Tuesday. But that's as exciting. Um, now I think what I want to do is I just want to pray for us. I know you might have had a long week. I know I did. Sometimes I've, I've this week I, I had moments where I was just weary. I was just tired, um, thinking about the world and, and, and thinking about the stresses of life really had me down a day. Um, and really what brought me out of that actually was getting to this book um, and was to, to spend some time um, with the Lord. Um, but if, if you've had a rough week, if you've had some downtime in the last week or month or year, no, you're not alone. No, I, I have too, and, and that we're all on this, this journey together, this path together. Um, 
And so I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for your family. I, I invite you to pray with me. And whatever may be going on, whether good or bad, you give that to the Lord today. So will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you have, you've been so good to us. You've treated us so kindly. And Lord, um, today we want to give you all our junk. Lord, the things that weigh us down, the things that stress us out, the things that make us weary, and the really the brokenness of life. Lord, we pray for our government today. Lord, we pray for peace and unity. That whether we're Democrat, Republican, or Independent, Lord, that we can learn to work together. That we can learn to love our neighbors. And Lord, that we could find some healing in this country. Lord, I want to pray for everybody that's watching. Lord, I ask that you bless them and you bless their families. Lord, if there be sickness out there, that you heal. Lord, if there are heartaches, that you comfort. If there is weakness, you strengthen. And Lord, you make us more like you. Lord, reveal yourself to us. Lord, our other prayers that you, we continue to be the church. That Lord, if someone would be lonely, we could be a friend. If someone would be hungry, we could provide food. And Lord, if someone couldn't pay a heat bill, that we would provide the financial needs. Lord, whatever the needs may exist in our community, Lord, we ask that you show them to us that we may step up as the people of God to provide and be the hands and the feet of Christ. Lord, thank you so much for what you've done for us. Lord, thank you that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for us. That he died and he took away our sins so that we could live free. And that Jesus is our hope, not just for tomorrow, Lord, but our hope for today. Lord, be with us, guide and direct us. We pray this now in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Today, I'm going to continue our series, um, Lessons from 2020. Lessons from 2020. If you remember, the, the first lesson was community is fundamental. Community is fundamental. Lesson number two is we are divided. Um, today, we're going to move into lesson three of 2020. This has been a series where I'm really trying to process this last year, right? This last year has been absolutely crazy. Um, some things that we've never thought before. Um, and so trying to look back and say, what can we learn as a church? What can we learn as the people of God? Um, and so today I'm going to be reading a scripture out of the book of Matthew. If you want to get your Bible and read along with me, uh, it'll be Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to read verses 24 through 27. So that is Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Here we go. And this is Jesus speaking. He's doing a teaching here. This is actually the very end or close to the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount is one of Jesus's longest teachings recorded in the Gospels. And he goes through and he's just teaching about life. Um, and this is what he says here in verse 24. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. Thanks be to God today for his word. Now, this is probably a story. If you've grown up in church, you've probably heard this little parable that Jesus tells. And he tells this two stories of somebody that builds their house on a rock with a firm foundation and another person that builds their house on the sand. Now, the one that builds on the rock the rains come, the storms come, and what happens to the house? It stays strong. But on the other side, that person that decided to build on the sand, I don't know if it's they wanted a beachfront property or, or what it was maybe about building in the sand. But the one that built on the sand, when the rains came, when the floods came, when the storm came, the house crumbled. And Jesus tells us that if we don't put into practice what he says, 
we will be a people that crumble. That that our houses or our personhood, our uh, we as a people will crumble if we don't listen to him. And it's really a powerful parable, and it's one that was been I've been really thinking about recently. And because when I look at our our society, when I look at America, church, American church, when I look even at my own life, if I'm being honest, sometimes I feel like I've built things on the sand. And that when things get really, really tough, things begin to crumble. My lesson from 2020 is that we must build on the rock. We must build on the rock. This year, I think we can all agree that it's been a storm. That it's not always been easy. That we've maybe known people get sick. Maybe we've known people that have passed away. Maybe we know people that have lost jobs or haven't had the financial means to to make it through the pandemic. Maybe we've known small businesses that have had to go out of business. We've seen the turmoil in politics, how everybody's divided. And if you're not on this side, then you are the enemy. You are the problem. Instead of you know, us coming together and trying to work on our problems and learning to compromise, you know, the things that we learn in grade school of how to be a team, right? Instead of doing that, we're always pointing the finger saying it's your fault. You're to blame. Not me. No, no, no. I've got things figured out. It's you. We've seen the the racial injustice around our country and and we've seen violence and we've seen lots of stuff that have just disrupted our society. It's disrupted who we are as a people. And I think we, we, we can sit and we can talk about what has been good disruption and what has been bad disruption, but I, I think we can all agree that we've, we've definitely gone through some storms this year. And what I want to bring attention to you today, for maybe you to hear, is if we're not careful and we've built on the sand, we're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. We will. And so then the question is, well, the, what is it to mean to build on the rock, right? Because none of us want to build on the sand, right? None of us want to say, hey, when a storm comes, we're not going to make it, right? We're going to collapse. And we don't want to be, we're, we don't want to be Christians to say we're building on things other than the rock. We, we don't want to do that. So what does it mean to build on the rock? And one of my favorite of Jesus's teachings in the Sermon on the Mount is that um, Jesus teaches about loving your neighbor. If you flip over to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, he says, If you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus says, you've heard to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Wow. You've heard that it says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. (laughs) Wow. You see, Jesus makes it clear in the Gospels that there are a lot of rules. If you go back into Jesus' time, right, the Jewish faith revolved around the law, the Old Testament. And... There were a bunch of laws. And in fact, we don't even have all the laws, but some of the what the Jewish religion had done is they built laws on top of laws, so you made sure and you didn't affect the laws. 
But what Jesus tells us is actually, hey, everything comes down to two laws. And this gets kind of to what I just read there in Matthew chapter 5. And what Jesus says is, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength. And the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. If you see a, a theme in what Jesus commands, he commands that his followers love. In fact, in John chapter 13, he says, um, I give you a new commandment. He's talking to his disciples. He says, love one another. Love one another. And by this, people will know you're my disciples. And so he tells us disciples, the way you will be different from the world is if you deeply love one another. So how do we build our house? How do we build our lives on the rock is that we love one another no matter what. We love people that are different than us. We love people that believe different than us. We love people that live different lifestyles than us. We love people that believe politically different than us. We love everybody. And if I look at our world right now, it doesn't seem like we're doing that. In fact, it seems like there's a lot of hate. In fact, it seems like we're very divided and we point our fingers and we call out the enemies. And you know what happens when we live a life like that? We're just building our life on the sand. We're building our life on the sand. And when storms come like they are coming now, we begin to crumble. We begin to, to shrivel up inside. We begin to live a life where we feel lifeless. And why is it? Because we have not listened to Jesus. We have not built our life on the firm foundation of the gospel that says, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and then love your neighbor. And who is your neighbor, right? Not your physical neighbor, not just the people that you know, but your neighbor is everybody, including your enemies. And Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. We need to take that to heart. Even if you think you're a great Christian, you've lived your whole life, even if you're a pastor and you know, you think you're great. Something we have to hear over and over again is that we have to be willing to look at our own lives and say, where do I have hate? Where have I been mean? Where do I need to pray for my enemies? Because it's hard. It's easy to love people that love us. It's a completely different thing to love people that don't. People that believe different. But it's what Jesus calls. And that is what it would mean to build on the rock. What I also love about this passage is that if you look at that, that term rock, Petra in the Greek, right? It's that same term that Jesus used later in Matthew. I think it's Matthew chapter 16 where, where Jesus is with his disciples and they say, Jesus, or, or Jesus asked them, who do people say that I am? And they say, well, some say the prophet, some say, you know, um, uh, Moses or actually, I, I can't remember. They say, people are saying you're all these other great things. And then Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And Jesus says, or and Peter says, you are the Messiah. And after that, Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my kingdom that even the gates of hell cannot overcome. On this Petra, on this rock. Right? There is this, this imagery from that passage to this passage that that part of building on the rock who the rock is sometimes it's thought that jesus was talking about peter i don't think so what i think jesus was talking about is jesus was saying i'm gonna build my kingdom on me right that jesus is actually the rock and on his life death and resurrection he was going to build a kingdom like no kingdom had ever been 
And so I think if you look back to this parable, right? If you look back to this parable and it says, build on the rock, one thing that we can look at and say is, you need to build your life on Jesus. I think we can all agree if this past year, if you put, if you've been building your life on politics, it's probably crumbled. If you put your life on business, it's probably crumbled. If you've built your life on government, it's crumbled. If you built your life on good health, it may have crumbled. If you built your life on your family or even your church community, as great as that may be, right, it may have crumbled. But what I think Jesus is saying here, if we don't build our life on him, we're going to crumble, right? That we live in this broken world where, where things are, are not going to last. Even good things like family and church, those are the things that have to still come second to the man named Jesus. And so ask yourself, are you built on Jesus? Is your life built on on the foundation of Jesus that cannot be shaken. No matter what storm, even worse storms than we've seen in 2020, if you're built on Jesus, you're going to be okay. And in fact, people will look at your life and say, there's something different about you. And you say, yeah, I built my life on this man named Jesus. And Jesus, I don't have everything together, but this man named Jesus does, and he's got my back. He walks with me, and he teaches me, and he loves me. If your life is not built on Jesus, it will crumble. And so I'm going to wrap up here, but something I want you to think about, because I personally have been thinking about it this week, and sometimes we, we all get off the path, right? We all get off that path that maybe God wants us on. And so maybe ask yourself this week those two questions, right? Those two questions, am I loving people? Or is there maybe some hate in me? Maybe I just love the people that love me, but my enemies, well, those are the enemies and they are the ones causing the problem. Maybe you need to pray and say, God, help me love everybody. The second question is, is your life built on Jesus? Is it built on Jesus Christ? I think if you can answer those two things as yes or you know, you're working towards that. Your house will be built. Your life will be built on solid ground that cannot be shaken. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your story, um, the gospel that, that can teach us just so much. Lord, right now we want to say we put our faith in Jesus. Sometimes we waver. Sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we question. But right now, Lord, no matter what is going on in our lives, we trust in Jesus. Lord, we know you are the way, the truth, in the life. We come to you and we ask that you would give us rest, that you would renew our spirits and you would help us build our house on that strong foundation. Lord, thank you so much that you forgive us for our sins. Help us to forgive others. Help us to love others the way you love us. We pray this now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, just one more reminder. I We'll have instructions um, for Zoom out on Facebook and uh, through email. So be on the lookout for that as hopefully uh, I'll see you Tuesday. And if not, um, I think again, probably next week, I will see you back here. But if you need anything, reach out to me. Uh, I love you all. I miss you. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Bye.